God's heart is not touched by traditions in worship, but by passion and commitment. Welcome to great Faith and Grace Life. This is where we share the good news of God's goodness and the undeserved or merited favor that Christ has brought for us to enjoy. Uh, living for his pleasure is the first purpose why God created us. And anything that brings pleasure to God is an act of worship. So the title of today's message is The Heart of Worship. The Heart of Worship. Heavenly Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will use this message to transform our hearts to the kind of heart that will give you worship that will be acceptable. Father, use my mouth as your megaphone to announce this good news to the whole world. In Jesus' name. I pray, Lord. You know, it is very important to examine what true worship is. What God is looking out for to be pleased with our worship. In our previous teaching concerning what gives God's pleasure, we're able to show us what worship is and some primary you know, understanding about worship. That this particular aspect of worship that is very important and we need to look at it and that talks about the heart of worship where is our heart the bible says in isaiah 29 verse 13 it says these people claim to worship me but their words are meaningless and their hearts are somewhere else their religion is nothing but human rules and traditions which they have simply memorized. This scripture points to a very important, you know, requirement for true worship, and that is the state of our heart. So we look at the heart of worship. So what then is the heart of worship? We can also have the answer in the word of God. From the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 1, Apostle Paul writes something about what the heart of worship is, the true worship is. Verse 1 says, I will read the good news version. It says, so then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. And in this scripture, we can see what it means to have true worship. And that is, you can see in this place, Paul urges us to fully surrender our lives to God in worship. So, surrendering is needed for true worship. It is the natural response to God's amazing love and mercy. That is, surrendering to God, you know, through our hearts. We give ourselves to him totally, not out of fear or duty, but in love, because he first loved us. Offering yourself to God is what worship is all about. So the art of worship is surrender. I know the word surrender is an unpopular word, disliked almost as much as the word submission. You know, it, it implies losing. When you talk of surrender, people think about losing. I don't want to be a loser. I don't want to be a loser. Surrender evokes the unpleasant image of admitting defeat in a battle, forfeiting in games, or yielding to a stronger opponent. The word is almost always used in a negative context. In today's competitive culture, we are taught to never give up or never give in. So we don't hear much about surrendering. We would rather talk about winning, about succeeding, about overcoming and conquering. You know, I mean, we don't want to talk about yielding. We don't want to talk about submitting any longer. We, we hardly talk about surrendering. And... Surrendering to God is the art of worship. It's what we really need to do. 
to be able to give up give god a true worship and this is what the bible calls consecration making jesus our lord taking up your cross dying to serve yielding to the spirit god wants your life all of it 95 percent of your life is not enough for god god wants total surrender the fact is there are many barriers that blocks our total surrender to God. The number one is fear. We have this fear in our hearts. Why the fear? The fear is, the, the, the fact is, we almost don't trust God enough with our life. We don't believe God can take charge of our life the way we want it. So we want to be in charge. So we don't want to surrender to somebody we don't even have an understanding of. Many of us, we don't know how much God loves us. I don't think you really look at the depth of God's love for you. If you want to know the depth of God's love, look at the cross. Where Jesus Christ spreads out his hand on the cross and say, look at me. See how much I love you. See how much... I love you. I gave all to you. I gave all because of you. Hmm. So, when we completely surrender what ourselves to Jesus, we discover that he's not a tyrant, but a savior. Not a boss, but a brother. Not a dictator, but a friend. And that is the Jesus I'm introducing to you when you surrender your life to him. Another sec another barrier, the second one, I can also discover that in does, you know, our total surrender to God is our pride. We are so proud. We are so conscious of our ego. We don't want to admit that we are just creatures and not the, in charge of everything. We are not in charge of everything. But you want to be like God. It is the oldest temptation. That desire to have complete control is the cause of so much stress in our lives. A man of God, A.W. Tozer, said something, and I quote, The reason why many are still troubled, still seeking, still making little forward progress, in their life is because they haven't yet come to the end of themselves we need to stop interfering with what god you know wants to do within us we are not god and we we'll never will be we are humans it is when we try to be god that we end up most like satan who desires the same thing god have mercy surrendering to god is not a feeling of being defeated. I want you to know this. Or an excuse for laziness. It is the accept. It is neither the acceptance of status quo. It is sacrificing your life or surrendering your life or suffering in order to change what needs to be changed. God often calls surrendered people to do battle on his behalf. Surrendering is not for cowards. Many of us are cowards. That is why we find it difficult to surrender our lives to Jesus. And likewise, I want you to know this about surrendering. Surrendering does not mean giving up the rational thinking. God will not waste the mind that he gives to you. God does not want robots to serve him. Surrendering is not repressing your personality god wants to use your unique personality everyone has a unique personality rather than it's being diminished surrendering and enhances it a man of god also observed and i quote the more we let god take us over the more truly ourselves will become because he made us he invented all the different people that you are and I were intended to be. It is when I turn to Christ, when I give up myself to his personality, that I first began to have a real personality of myself. 
unquote. So surrendering is best demonstrated in obedience. You say yes, Lord, to whatever he asks of you. To say no is to speak a contradiction. You can't call Jesus your Lord when you refuse to obey him. The fact is many Christians do not understand or know the meaning of Lord. The word Lord simply means master. Many of us, we call Jesus master and yet we disobey him. So, let's look at the life of Simon Peter. After a night of failed fishing, Simon was a model of surrender when Jesus told him to try again. He said, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Surrender people obey God's word, even when it doesn't make sense. So a man who has toiled all night doesn't make sense to him to try again. But when the master says, try again, you have to try again. I want to encourage you, my brother. Why not try again? Hallelujah. Now, the Bible shows us examples of other people like Simon that fully surrendered their lives to God by trusting him. What about Abraham? Abraham followed God's leading without knowing where it would take him. Anna waited for God's perfect timing without knowing when. Mary, another example, expected a miracle without knowing how. When the angel explained God's, you know, strange plans to her, she calmly responded, I am the Lord's servant, and I'm willing to accept whatever he wants. That's a surrendered heart. What about Joseph? Joseph trusted God's purpose without knowing why circumstances happened the way they, they did to him. You know the story of Joseph. What about Paul? Paul surrendered to Jesus. He said, I am ready to not only be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A totally surrendered vessel. Surrendered people are the one God uses. Each of these people were fully surrendered to God. Now, how do you know you are already you are surrendered to God? When you rely on God to work things out instead of trying to manipulate others. Many of us are manipulators. Many of us play witchcraft and we do not know. When we force our agenda and control the situation. You let God, I mean, you let go and let God work for you. You don't have to always be in charge. The Bible says, surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for him. Many of us, we cannot wait. Surrendering requires waiting. So in, 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 instead of trying harder, why not just trust more? Don't react to criticism and rush to defend yourself. You know, allow God to act on your behalf. <laughs> when you look at the book of Isaiah 64 verse 4, I want you to take this scripture home. It says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God beside you. Who asks for the one who waits for him? That's a great scripture that has touched my life. I have learned to wait for him so that God can act on my behalf. Our supreme example of self surrender is Jesus Christ, our master. You remember the night before his crucifixion, Jesus surrendered himself to God's plan. He prayed, Father, Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will, not mine. Jesus didn't pray, God, if you are able to take away this pain, please do so. He had already affirmed that God can do anything. He 
Instead, he prayed, God, if it is in your best interest to remove this suffering, please do so. But if it fulfills your purpose, that's what I want also. Hallelujah. Genuine surrender says, Father, if this problem, if this pain, if this sickness or circumstance is needed to fulfill your purpose and glory in my life or in another's, please don't take it away. This level of maturity does not come easy. In Jesus' case, he agonized so much over God's plan that he sweat drops of blood. Surrender is hard work. In our case, it is intense warfare against our self-centered nation. You know, we are naturally self-centered. But when Christ has become your Lord and your Master, you become Christ-centered. Hallelujah. So the Bible is very clear about how you benefit when you fully surrender your life to God. The first benefit is that you experience the peace of God that passes all understanding when you surrender all to Jesus. Next, you experience freedom because you are freed from all the yoke and the bondages. You added everything to God. So you experience God's power in your life. When you surrender, you give God the opportunity to manifest His power and His glory in your life. You know, stubborn temptations are over and overwhelming problems can be defeated by Christ when we give everything to him. Remember the story of Joshua when he approached the biggest battle of his life. He encountered God. He fell in worship before him and surrendered his plans unto him. That surrender led to a stunning victory at Jericho. You know the story of the battle, how, how the children of God conquered Jericho. There is no way Joshua could have imagined that victory or that feat by his own idea, by his own plan. It takes a man who has surrendered his own plan to God for him to walk around the world for seven days and see the world pull down. It takes a surrendered heart to have great victory. And this is a paradox. Victory comes through surrender. Surrender doesn't weaken you, it strengthens you. When you surrender to God, you don't have to fear or surrender to anything else. The truth about life is that everybody eventually surrenders to something or someone. If not to God, you will surrender to the opinions or expectation of others. You will surrender to money or to resentment or to fear or to your own pride or to your own lust or ego. You are designed to worship God and if you fail to worship Him, you will create other things or idols to give your life to. You are free to choose what you surrender to, but you are not free from the consequences of that choice. And that is the truth. A man of God said this, and I quote, If you don't surrender to Christ, you surrender to chaos. Many of us are living a chaotic life because we fail to make Christ our Lord and our Savior. Surrender is not just the best way, it is the only way to live if you want to enjoy a life in the Spirit. Nothing else works. All other approaches lead to frustration. It leads to disappointment. It leads to self-destruction. Someone, someone, someone may ask this question. How often should I surrender? Surrendering is not just a one-time event. Paul says, I die daily. For a long time, I've learned to pray this prayer. To die daily. Hallelujah. There is a moment of surrender. And there is the practice, practice of surrender. You know, the problem with a living sacrifice is that 
it can crawl off the altar. So you may have to surrender your life 50 times a day. You must make it a daily happy. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, then you must give up the things you, that, that you want. You must be willing to give up your life daily to follow me. Hallelujah. I want to give you this one. I want to sound this note of warning as I'm running up. When you decide to live a totally surrendered life, that decision will be tested. Sometimes it will mean doing inconvenient, unpopular, and costly, or even seemingly impossible tasks. It will often mean doing the opposite of what you would like to do. Abraham was tested, the father of faith. The Bible says God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham, and Abraham answered, Yes, here I am. God says, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. There on a mountain that I will show you, offer him a sacrifice to him. And this was Abraham's response. Early in the next morning, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice. That is a mark of a totally surrendered heart. Now I want you to do something. Please do this as I'm rounding up. Make this determination. I want you to put Jesus in the driver's seat of your life. And take your hands off the steering wheel. Don't be afraid. Nothing under his control can ever be out of control. And that is Jesus for you. Let him be at the driver's seat of your life. Take off your hand and allow him to steer your life. Then I want you to sing this song with me as I'm rounding up. Are you ready? I want you to sing this song with me. It's a popular song. It sings, All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I free. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. I surrender. I surrender. All to thee, my brother. That Savior, I surrender. Oh, that is the song I want you to always sing. Why? Because surrendering to God is the art of worship. Until I come your way next time, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom. Hallelujah.